Hello everyone, it's Matthew, and uh, today we're going to continue with the gel tutorial. So, let's get started. So you'll see that last time we have class1.java in our project, package yt1, and then class1.java. You can see that now there is actually a drop down box. You can actually go to class1 and then you can see the main. So this is basically showing you that this is the main. If I have other functions, um, then it will also show those. So that's a nice feature within the clips. You can actually go into each class and dissect each part, which we'll probably use to explain some things. But today we're going to do variables. And variables are effectively... Um, just remember back to school when you did algebra. So you might have x times y is equal to 70 and then x equal to 5 so you'd have to work out how much y is in this case 14 and uh, and yeah so you'd have to work out how much y is well in programming it's kind of the same thing but you're not trying to work it out you're setting them so you have x equal to 5 and then y equal to 14 and then x times y would be equal to 70. So variables can really come into their own when you don't know a value and you have to calculate a value just using certain things. That's why like, the vast majority of programming is you have to program for every possible situation. The only way to do that is with variables. So for example if you have a 2D character on a screen and this would be a perfect op perfect opportunity to open paint.net so say you have a 2d character on the screen when it opens and you want to know you want to like basically print out or you want to store the x and y coordinates because you want to display the character on those x and y coordinates so for example we'll just do that and that great and here's the player and here's an x of say 10 and a y of say 8 yep that is definitely an 8 <laughs> so here's an x of 10 and a y of 8 so how are you going to you wouldn't know this, but if he moved one to the left, his x would be 7. So if I wanted to print out his corners, I couldn't just put 10, 8. I would have to update that somehow, and I would do that using a variable. So how do we create variables? Well, ver creating variables is effectively a three-step process. You first have to define the visibility of the variable. For now, we're just going to type public. I'll get onto that more in another tutorial. Oh, then you have to define the type. So this could be an integer, a float, or a boolean. There's many others, but we will just uh, stick with three main ones. And uh, we're in the companion video for this episode, we will go over more. So public. So integer. Then we'll have x. And just, I uh, guess for now, just don't put public because it's not in a. Uh, just leave public out basically. So we'll have int y2. As it's in the main, you don't define variables with, uh, with visibility. And in fact, we we will bring them out. So just make them outside of the main. And x and y. So this is actually a very good way to create a lot of variables uh, in one line. You can do int x, and then as long as y is also an integer, you will have uh, y there. So well, that's all well and good, but. A large problem with this, and you can probably already tell a large problem with it, 
is that if they're integers, then the character movement is not going to be smooth. Being an integer will mean that it moves. So say I want to minus it, it will move like that instead of just a smooth movement. It will just move like that. It will be very quick and very jagged. And that is that's bad. But for now, we will print out players x is and then we will uh, plus x plus players y is plus y or let me cast it to a string maybe or Okay, right. We'll just stick it in separate here. Uh, we will stick it in separate system to add different lines. Basically, what I'm trying to prove here, I'm using my. This is Python. This is Python. No. Players X's. We get we get more into like converting them to string. Um, using two string functions. Uh. So for example, let me just stick x Ah yes, okay right So here we get off of our first visibility thing You can see that x is public, so it can be seen But x is related to class 1 this means that it is connected, if you will. I literally just woke up, so I am programming the ability is significantly suffering. So if we make it static, this means that it's in class 1, but it's not connected in any way to class 1. So for now we'll just use it as static. And... Yep, and then we can do players y is... So that's like, as soon as you can see straight away, you're going to have to be careful with visibility. But Eclipse does offer a large amount of uh, options with that and help. So it will output just the player's X and the player's Y. Now we will probably get an exception for this. No, okay, right. The reason we didn't, we would either get an exception, or we would get a, uh, or we would get an, uh, just zero, zero, because we haven't set the player's X or the player's Y. So, we will do, um, X is equal to 5, and then we, because we're setting X equal to 5 before it, it will then print out x is equal to 5 because this is setting the variable equal to 5 and now so we'll also just to wrap just to show order of um, code we'll set y equal to 8 x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 0 this is because y was equal to 8 after it was set Okay, now if I add another print line statement and run it, you'll see that we'll get players x equal to 5, players y is equal to 5, players x equal to 5, players y is equal to 8, because before the print statement was run, y was set to the value of 8. Fairly self explanatory. Now, here's, yeah, I mentioned a problem where the movement will be incredibly jaggy. This is because it's integers and it's moving by one whole coordinate instead of moving by like 0.1 of a coordinate which would be much more smooth and something that you would find commonly. Um, so how are we going to fix this? Well we're going to change the type of this a little bit. We're going to call it a float. So a float allows a decimal. So if I had int and I set it to 5.8 you can see it's bringing up an error and you can either change type 
x2 double, which is uh, like the same as a float, but more precise. Um, which I will teach you about in a minute. And then you could either cast it to int, um, which we'll talk about later. So as you see, I can't set it to a to anything else. But if I change it to a float. 5.8 and then cast it to a float it will work just fine place x is 5.8 and I believe the best way to actually write a float is to get air so you don't have to cast it but if you prefer a float I think you put f at the end yes uh, casting is effectively just converting the type. So you can cast something to a, uh, an integer, for example. So 5.8f, and then I cast it to an integer. It's going to convert that 5.8 to a whole integer, so it's be 5. I think it always rounds down, not up. So, um,. That's floats. Now let's go on to doubles basically at just more precise versions. Float are 32 bits uh, and doubles are 64 bits, I believe. So also let's go on booleans. So a boolean holds a value of either true. This is very useful when you're doing conditional programming such as if statements, uh, yada yada yada. Because you, if you can just type if x, and if x is true, then it will run. And it's very readable and it's just overall a good way to uh, make sure that everything is running. And as you can see in the console down here, players x is true, players y is false, players x is true, players y is false. And uh, that's the real, with boolean. If you never initialize them, then it's always set to uh, it's always set to false or zero. You can set, I believe, and we'll test this out here. But I believe you can cast a boolean with an integer. So if one, maybe not actually. Cannot cast with int boolean. Um, Okay, no. I know there is a way for you to use 0 and 1 as 1 being true and 0 being false, but we will not worry about that for now. That's basically the core fundamentals of variables. There are other types, other ways to do things, such as uh, double, which is just, as I mentioned, longer. Then you can have long, um, which I don't think actually works for that. Maybe it goes before I do it. Long is a long is a pesky one. But basically, oh yeah. Of course, if I change it to a double, it's gonna have issues. So um, yeah, that's the fundamentals of variables. That's pretty much all you need to know for most of this tutorial series. And we will cover some other variable types that are uh, very useful. So thank you very much for watching, this has been Matt, like, favourite and subscribe, and goodbye.